I'm Liz Benoit. I am a family outreach worker and the program that I work for is the Aboriginal Family Outreach Program slash center. Some kind of like a family center on wheels and I work for the Native Council of Nova Scotia. So my program is I work from anybody from prenatal to the elders and everybody in between. So it's kind of complex because I am just the one person. So I can do anything from working one-on-ones with mom and dads, um, that's going to court with them, dealing with CPS, um, trying to get their status cards, um, educating them on um, the culture because for off-reserve Aboriginals, for whom is my targeted population, a lot of them still don't know the culture. Right, so I get to educate families. Um, gosh, um, I go into the schools uh, to educate and bring awareness about the culture, but I do it in a way that it's just not geared for Aboriginal kids. Because once again, I work with off reserve, so we bring all the cultures together, and we celebrate all the cultures with the main being the Aboriginal culture. So I do after school programs, I do lunch and learn, um, I do focus groups with youth. Um, and what I do with them is either I'll bring in an elder um, or I'll have a guest speaker from the Native Council come in like it fits with the youth. I'll bring in the ABTAC, the employment and education part on that end. Um, we do traditional crafts, we make traditional foods. Um, so that's, then I do family programs, baby groups. So it's a big wide range of what I do. And my district is far, like it's from Digby to Windsor, which is a huge district. Feedback for sure. Um, partnerships, everybody wanting to, to partner with the program and the native council. Um, feedbacks from the kids themselves that they look forward to when I'm coming because they're going to learn something new whether it's a traditional craft or we read from a book or the one thing that I'm really focusing on now working with kids is the seven sacred teachings to incorporate that so then they can own it and teach other kids in the school because I think we should all follow the seven sacred teachings right it's what life's all about and I find the kids are kind of missing that so I'm trying to incorporate that as much as I possibly can so that alone I'm in my fourth year so that's pretty good it was a pilot project so and the demand for me I'm only one person but I know if there was more people at least three four people because of the district we would be busy all the time and we could hit every school whereas I'm only hitting the Digby area because that's where I'm centered out of and the need is there and the want is there so truthfully the challenges that I'm having is not so much even challenging because being an off-reserve Aboriginal myself I don't know the culture so I am learning as I'm going so for me I think the challenge is it's just time if I had more time that I could spend with elders, and which I am going to do because we're putting on a um, Knowledge Keeper workshop here in next month. So I'm very excited about that to honor our elders. So, um, but that's a challenge. It's just there's not enough Aboriginal, I want to say supports or family or front workers or whatever you want to say out there. We're very few and far in between, especially down in my area. I think I'm bringing awareness and education to a lot of people that haven't had it before, um, to know that they have now um, an Aboriginal representative in their area. That makes them feel a little bit more, I don't know, safe, I guess. And yeah. So I think that would be one of the bigger things because there was never anything down our way before for Aboriginals besides the reserves. So that's always nice to see that it's branching out and getting out there. <sighs> Just to have the support. A lot of people don't have the support. A lot of families 
feel like they're missing something and they're quite not sure what it is. And when they start to learn about the culture, then they realize that this is what they're missing and they embrace it and they want to learn more and more and more and more. So that's another way that I know that what we're doing is the good thing because just from the families themselves with the feedback, more acceptance, which is good. And I think too, it's because when I say I bring all the kids together, I want us, the kids to realize that we're all the same, but yet we're different. So we can celebrate all of our differences and learn from each other. And that has been a big impact. My program is all over the place because I am the only person doing a family outreach center. So um, it varies. I try and get into the schools at least three, four times a month if I can. Um, other than that, I'm doing programming, whether it's healthy relations, um, cooking, life skills, employment. Um, yeah, I'm a busy kind of gal. So, yeah, more people out there spreading the word. Because I think a lot of people are naive because they just don't get it or they don't know about it, the culture. And then when they do find out about the culture, it's just like they embrace it and they want, they're like sponges. They want more and more and more and they want to learn more and more. So that's always good. Okay, so if you needed to start a program like this, you'd have to be associated with a not-for-profit like I am with the Native Council. Um, I do believe my funding is provincial. It's not federal. Um, so write your proposal and away you go, right? I know that we were a pilot project. What they did in the beginning was, um, I think I'm the only one so far, we partnered up with the Digby Family Center so that they would have somebody there. And it's worked out really, really well. So that would be another avenue that they could look into is partnering up with a family center. And I think it would make a big difference. And I think um, Aboriginal families would be more apt to go and get the, the supports and resources that are out there. Um, I hear like with with our program and with the center, there's no conflict. Mom's dad's come and they feel very comfortable, very safe. Um, I've heard that down the other end of the province, not so much. So it's been kind of like building relationships up again. But that would just give our people another avenue to tap into. So I'm all for that. I think I want to talk about the Lunch and Learn. So the Lunch and Learn was with the adult um, students. So I think they're in level four. Um, per, if taking the Lunch and Learn, um, they got a credit towards their studies for the year, for their Indigenous part. So that was a good kind of like, let's see if this is going to work or not. Um, I do believe we had 17 students last year. Six was from NSCC. And um, how many did I say? The rest were from the adult learning program. Um, so when we were there, we had a um, Mi'kmaq, instructor who knew Mi'kmaq language, so he had taught us a lot. Um, in the end, we made a drum, but we also learned the welcome song and the honor song. And during that time, we ate traditional foods. So it was it went very, very well. So that was my second year. This year, we're doing the same thing, but we're going up to the high school, NSCC. And on Friday, I think I can talk about this. Um, the instructor wants to partner with the Native Council and my program to do an experiential component to the curriculum. So I'll be a part of that also, which I'm looking very, very forward to. And like I was saying, we're having a retreat for the knowledge keepers just to give back to for what they've given to us. So I'm looking forward to that. So this program has, yeah, it's really gone big and we've touched a lot of people. So I'm excited. I think we'll be on the same wave. I think what we'll be doing will probably be 
tapping more into like NSEC to help build that curriculum. Um, I can hopefully see me out in the, the schools doing focus groups and after school programs. Um, we did do a program last year um, with the whole elementary school and it was just to bring awareness and education. So we broke it up in, in um, grades. And so for the younger ones, we had a storyteller come in and she did the honor song with them and whatnot. And they got to put their handprints on a TP and get to sit in the TP because a lot of them just never experienced that. And then the second, the next levels, we did um, medicine poaches and we've talked about that and about the, the smudging and the importance of that. And for the last one, we did the dream catchers and we dressed feathers so that they could hang it in their gym and be proud of what it is. So that worked very, very well also. So yeah, you can see me still going in that, just bringing awareness and education to different schools around the area. As I said earlier, I'm just learning myself as I'm going. So to me, it is anything that I can absorb, whether it's language, food, tradition, storytelling, whichever, whatever. Um, and also just educating the public about the beauty of the culture and what it encompasses and the meanings behind it. So that's where my train of education is going. How should it be taught? I think that varies. I think it varies from community to community because I see that just in the different communities that I'm in. Um, I think it should be taught by an elder who knows, and I'll say talk the talk and walk the walk, right? So they have all the teachings, they have all the, the traditions, and I think um, elders should be a big part of the education because I'll just go by my grandmother who left the reserve and couldn't talk about or practice her culture. We always thought it was the new fee way right? Until I started working in an indigenous field. And it's just like, no, this is Aboriginal. So then I started putting the pieces together. Okay, so this is this is going to be a pilot project. Um, so I think the aim of it is to, so we'll be going out, we'll be studying the plants and the meanings behind that. Um, we'll be going on a moose hunt, but we'll be breaking it all down, the moose all down, and putting it in the different criterias for science, which what and not what. Um, we will be doing hands-on cooking food, because um, a lot of our people don't have the skills anymore for whatever reasons, right? It's not just our people, it's everybody, right? Um, so it's, it's bringing it back to where it should be, where it's always should have been, right? So I do believe that's the route that she's going. Then there'll be the language component also. So I think, I don't like to get into status and non-status, but I think status Aboriginals or Indigenous people hold the culture more to them because they've been exposed to it. So I think those two should be incorporated into who should be educating people, right? I mean, it's great for me who was just learning, but do they get the same meaning behind it from somebody who has been in it all their life? Probably not, right? So, I mean, I'm not naive to think that. So, yeah, those are your educators, definitely the elders. I like to see it in the schools more and more and more and more. And I like to see it started at an early age because that's when they're sponges and that's when there is no bias and no stigma. And that's where I try and focus really on is in the elementary school because if we break the cycles now, right? So, but I would like to see it in all levels of education, but definitely in the elementary school start now.